Madam Web is the latest film in the Sony universe of Marvel characters, but can Cassandra Webb see success in her future or should we ask again later? What's up guys? Welcome back to the Montyverse. I just saw Madam Web and boy, do we have to talk about this movie. But before we get into any details, I want you guys to come here for a second. No, a little bit closer. This movie is bad, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's not good. And what I mean by that is this movie is like a fever dream. I don't even really know what happened, how it got made, who it's for, but all I know is it was one hell of a ride and I found myself accidentally enjoying this movie a lot. Don't get me wrong, it is not a good movie. It's not a good movie technically, it's not a well-acted movie, it's not a well-written movie, but I will say that it is a very emotional movie. And when I say that, I mean that I found myself crying a lot during the film. And when I say that, I mean I was laughing so hard that tears were rolling down my face. This film is like an homage to the 2005 era Marvel movies, except on acid. It is a psychedelic trip into the world of Madam Web. And who else better to start with then Cassandra Webb herself, Dakota Johnson. It's weird, the movie would have you believe that the main conflict of the film is the Web Warriors versus Ezekiel Sims, but I would argue that the real main conflict of the movie is between Dakota Johnson and the English language because she is struggling in every scene to provide any sort of emotion other than complete boredom. I'm not gonna lie, her dry delivery does really work at times, and when I say it works, I mean it was hilarious. Not far behind Johnson, though, is Sydney Sweeney, who at least attempts to put a little bit of effort into her delivery, but still, it comes off so flat, and she seems so bored. I just don't know what she was trying to do. I think Celeste O'Connor and Isabella Mercad were fine, but they just have nothing to do in this movie. Their characters are so flat one note, one dimensional. They have no real personality other than the most baseline, tropey character traits. The smart one, the rich sassy one, the introvert. That is basically it when it comes to those three characters. They are essentially just a plot device in this movie and it's really sad because in the comics these are actually three pretty interesting characters and I do think that there is an interesting story to be told in a movie like this revolving around them, but I do think it was mismarketed. They really don't do much in this movie. I mean, we have to talk about Ezekiel Sims because he is the main antagonist of the movie and boy does this performance just not work in the best way possible. You will find yourself enjoying every second of screen time you have with Ezekiel Sims but not the way they intended you to. I mean some of his dialogue is absolutely laughable. The choices when it comes to acting and directing in the scenes involving Ezekiel were so absurd and I found myself really questioning what the heck was going on so many times throughout this film. Director S.J. Clarkson attempts to do something with the camera but it's also sloppy and convoluted i had a hard time following a lot of the action sequences and anytime there tried to be some interesting camera angles they just were so absurdly awkward i will say a bright spot in this film is adam scott who does play a young Spoiler alert, Ben Parker. Yes, he plays Uncle Ben, Peter Parker's ill-fated uncle. And I have to say, he actually gives a performance in this movie and one that I enjoyed watching. And I think he brings something new to this character that we've seen done a couple of times already. And we're so used to seeing a certain way. We're so used to seeing an older, more stern and wise Uncle Ben. And I really do think he is a different version of that character that has shades of the Ben that we know and love. Another drawback of this movie is its writing. I think the story is very sloppy and convoluted and it takes aspects from Spider-Man comics that I just don't think are very good. Listen, when it comes to Sony, Spider-Man is their golden goose, right? He is their cash cow. When you take Spider-Man and you create this expansive mythological lore behind the power set, like the spider people and the web of life and destiny, I really think it dilutes the character of Spider-Man. Like counterpoint to that, in the Spider-Verse movies, you have movies that feature hundreds of, if not thousands of spider people, but you never lose sight of the importance of Spider-Man and being a spider person. Where I think in Madam Web, just like in the comics, it gets very much diluted by over explaining everything to a point where I really just don't care. And it takes away any importance to the roles that these heroes have because they're just a dime a dozen and they have really no personality that we could attach onto. Madam Web's strengths do lie in its weaknesses because this movie is the meme movie event that we were promised when Morbius first came out. Morbius was a terrible film. 
so unenjoyable, boring, dreadful, but I think Madam Web redeems itself by being enjoyably bad. So bad that it is potentially good. It's not good, but it's so bad that you will enjoy watching this movie. It is worth the price of admission. I'm telling you that you should go see this film. I think you will enjoy it for what it is, but I want to give you tempered expectations because I don't want you to go into this movie expecting it to be one thing. I want you to go into this movie expecting it to be a fun time at the theaters because I think you will get the most enjoyment out of it if you look at it that way. So with that being said, I will be giving Madam Web a solid two out of five webs. I think it's a fun film. I think it's a bad film, but I did have a lot of fun watching it. But before we go, we'll be introducing a brand new rating system into the Monteverse because while this film is a two out of five, I don't think it justifies how watchable it is. So we will be introducing the Morbius scale to rate how much of a meme this movie is. And I have to say, as our first movie using this scale, Madam Web is a solid five out of five morbs. This movie needs to be studied, analyzed, and one day someone can figure out how exactly it got made. And when they do, I'll be here waiting because, listen, this movie's making web billion dollars at the box office. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and the notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest content. If you want to check out our other reviews, click the link on the page. And until next time, guys, stay versed.